Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name for the record? Uh, Dante Carlson. And Dante, do you work? I do. What do you do? I am a cook. And how old are you? I am 21. How old were you on July 30, 2022? I was 20 years old. And on that day, were you tubing on the Apple River? Yes, I was. With your dad and some other people? Yes. Um, were you consuming alcohol? Yes, I was. Do you know how much you had? Um, a Budweiser, a White Claw. I think I had just opened a Truly when this all started. And um, at some point, did something catch your attention as you were tubing down the river? Uh, yes, we heard screams for help. And did you, um, what happened next? Um, my dad told us to post up and then wait, and then he told us to go over and see what was going on. Did he say to try to de-escalate? No, he didn't say de-escalate. He just asked us to figure out what was going on. And did you go over there? Yes. And could you hear the teenagers yelling? Yes. Do you remember what they were yelling? Um, at first it was help, then it was cheering, and then they were calling them names. And did you try to ask Nikolai what was going on? Yes. Did he answer you? No. Um, were you telling him to leave also? Yes. At some point, did you see, did it change from verbal to physical? Yes. And can you describe what you remember about, like, what you were doing, what you saw? Um, I had asked Nikolai Mew what was going on, what's going on. He didn't answer me, so I turned to the kids group, and I went, what's going on? And they shouted, he's looking for little girls. And I'm like, he's looking for little girls? Confused. And then I went again to turn back and get his side of the story, and that's when he punched Madison in the face. Did you, what do you remember next after that? I punched him. Uh, can we, actually let me get it ready first. So did you punch him in response to him hitting Madison? Yes. start on slide 2553. I'm going to go through these and ask you some questions. I'm ready. And Try uh, clearing it out and starting again. Trying to plugged in, yeah. My screen flashed. There we go. And so we're on two five five three. Did you ever see Nikolai with a knife in his hand? No. 
Obviously, at the time, you didn't know Nikolai or the teenagers? No. I'm scrolling to the right. So is that you? Yes. In 2557? Yes. So you're standing right to the right of... Madison Riley. and Riley. I'm going to keep going. So 2661, is that where you're hitting him in response? Yes. Who's that in the yellow shorts on just on the right? Uh, that would be AJ Martin. And then the last, he was on the camera, he was walking over? Yes. Is that you? Is that you? Yes. Again? Okay. You didn't notice the knife? No. There either. One. Okay, I'm gonna just show you three frames here. Two seven four four. Two seven four five. Two. I guess four frames. 746-2747. Does that look like you're hitting him again there? Uh, could be. How many times do you remember hitting him? Um, I remember punching him, and then that I believe I may have smacked him twice. go through and now where you are on this I'm paused at 2781 you're off you'd be off to the right of the screen here yes And a 2828, who's that? That would be my brother, Tony. Who's that in the back on the top left? Uh, oh, that's Riley. And I'm on frame 2880. Have you seen this video? Yes. Uh, can you hear Tony yelling anything at, at this point in the video? Um, I, yes. I'll ask it a different way. I'll withdraw the question. I'll, I'll, if you recall, is Tony yelling anything at you at this part? Uh, yes. What was I that? believe he was yelling at us to stop. And so he's facing you at this point in the video? Yes, I believe so. Stopped at 2939. Now I want to play the video so we have audio. You can mute the screen or block the screen. After you saw. Nikolai strike Maddie. Did you yell something about it? Yes. Do you remember what you yelled? You never hit a woman.
All right, I'm ready. I'm at 156 in the video. <laughs> do you hear you saying that in that portion of the video? I do. And now I stopped at 157. I'm going to keep going forward. So, Riley, now we see I'm at 202. Riley clutching her side, do you see that? Yes. Did you, do, you, do you remember if you saw that at the time or not? I do not remember. But it was after, when she's seen with an injury on the video, it was after you yelled. You don't hit a button. Did you, um, do an interview with law enforcement? Yes. At, well, actually, let me back up. So, at some point, are you stabbed? Yes. And what, what do you remember of, actually just, what do you remember in your mind, not from the video, about what happened after, um, well, I guess first let me ask, do you remember Tony telling you to back up or get back? I remember him pushing me away from the commotion. Okay. And what do you remember after that? Um, I was pushed away and then I heard screaming going on behind me, so I had turned around and then... I was looking at Nick, and he was standing maybe six feet in front of me. He just walked towards me and stabbed me. And what do you recall happening after that? Uh, I went to my dad. Did you see what Nikolai did after that? No. Do you, do you have a memory of the sequence of when people were stabbed? At first, I thought it was Riley, uh, me, Isaac, AJ, and then my brother, but as video has shown, that wasn't the order. So when you, when you were interviewed by law enforcement, were you trying to remember and tell them what happened? I yes. believe that's the order I had used. I, can't exactly say I was. Were you in the hospital when you were interviewed? Yeah. It was the same day of the stabbings? I think I was at the hospital for maybe two minutes before I was interviewed. <clears throat> so at the scene, were you, how'd you get to the hospital? Were you rushed away in an ambulance? Uh, I remember leaning up against the cop car and then coming to, I was in an ambulance. And then the next thing I know is on the highway being put into, I think, a helicopter. And sometime shortly after you got the, to the hospital is when you were interviewed? Yeah. And did you tell law enforcement that you saw that it was Riley who got hit by Nikolai? I could have. You don't remember your what you said in your interview? Not by heart. Where were you stabbed? Uh, in my lower abdomen, I guess, my lower chest area. Can you stand up and just point? Uh, 
right here. I mean, I can show you if you want. Are you comfortable showing your, you do have a scar? Yeah. That shows the exact spot? Yeah. Is that, looks like a little bit off the center to the left, right below your rib cage? Right below my rib cage, yeah. In the jury seat? Permission to approach? Yes. yes. 31. Showing when it's been marked as exhibit 31. Can you identify what that is? That is my uh, stab wound, I think two days after I got home. Okay. From the hospital. Permission to publish. Any objection to 31? No objection, no objection to publication. Received. We just do that one more. Yeah. Oh, do I have to turn it on? Okay. I can do it. seen the video, is that right? Yes. Um, are, are, do you see yourself get stabbed in the video? No. And Dante, if, you're, if your medical records say that your BAC was a point one one nine, does that Seem probably about in the ballpark. Yeah. Okay. I don't have anything. Well. Oh. How tall are you, and what do you weigh? Uh, six foot and one eighty-five. I think four or five more questions. Did you know if Nikolai was alone or in a group? Mm, I didn't know. Did he ever say he had a group upstream that you heard? No. Did you ever hear anyone threaten Nikolai before you saw the strike on Maddie? No. I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson. Your testimony was that you had two beers prior to walking over there with the Truly in your hand? Yeah. And I would imagine you didn't consume really any of the Truly then, correct? Correct. So your testimony to the jury is the extent of the alcohol that you drank that day was two beers, correct? Um, but I was asked, yes. Well, I'm asking you now under oath, is that truthful testimony? Uh, I had two beers, yes. Okay. Um, in the medical evidence, the medical chemical evidence is that your blood alcohol level was 0.119, correct? Yes. Do you understand that it would take a lot more than two beers to get to a 0.119 blood alcohol concentration? I would. Do you have any explanation how you can reconcile your oath, your under oath testimony that you only had two beers and the medical evidence that your blood alcohol concentration was 0.119? Yes, I had some hard liquor as well. Okay, so when you were asked questions about how much you had to drink, you chose to only say... I was asked how many beers I had. Okay. Um, okay, and so unless somebody asks you specifically an exact question, you're not going to just volunteer information that's hurtful to you, correct? Mm, no, I was not asked the question, so I didn't answer. I figured he was going to ask it next, but... You know, and uh, it's been 21 months now? 
Yeah. And over those 21 months, you spoke with law enforcement numerous times? Yes. You spoke with the district attorney's office numerous times? Yes. You spoke with victim witness people numerous times? Yes. And you were just waiting for somebody to ask you that perfect question? Sustained. Were you just waiting for somebody to ask you that perfect question? Sustained. Sustained. You made your points. Um, the photo, have you seen the photo of the uh, 10 of you guys on the river that day? Yes. And in that photo, you're drinking a beer, correct? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I'm showing you what's been marked as exhibit. Oh, nope, you're not. Is it 26 C, do you see that, correct? Yep. You're not drinking a beer, I had that wrong, correct? Correct. Okay. There's other people drinking beers, correct? Yes. All right. I think it should be 26 A, that's what we called the other one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't read it. Right. 26 A, not 26 C. Um, the hard liquor that you were uh, drinking, what was that consumed in? A um, it was... Off on a riverbed, uh, shortly before we got to where the incident happened, there were shots of butterscotch schnapps out of uh, skis. Okay, and so you would consume those prior to, just prior to this, right? Yeah. We have to blow up the highway. Perfect. Thank you. Show you what's been marked as exhibit number 25A. Can you see that from where you're standing? Yes. You see here that there's a, a position here that says hideaway bar. You see that? Yes. And then we see this here as incident location, correct? Yep. Um, and from the start until you got off the river, you had two beers, correct? Yes. And then you had hard alcohol as well, correct? Yes. All of that hard alcohol you say was consumed at the hideaway bar? I don't know if it was the hideaway bar. It was a point where people could camp and they offered us shots as we were riding down. Okay. Do you know of any other place on the river where you can buy shots at a bar other than that? Uh, it was a campsite. Okay. And so who offered you these shots? I don't know. Okay. The stranger offered you those shots? Yes. How many shots was it? Ten? No, like two. Two shots? Yes. So your testimony is that you had four alcoholic drinks that day, correct? Yes. Do you think four alcoholic drinks for a man who's six foot tall, 185 pounds, over the course of numerous hours would get your blood alcohol level to 0.119? I'm not a scientist. Okay. What was the objection? Foundation. Yeah, it's foundation to calculate is on the BAC. Sustained. Did you think you were intoxicated? No. Um, the alcohol test that you took at the hospital, that was hours after the incident, correct? I do not know when it was administered. Did you have any alcohol after the incident? No. Do you know if your alcohol rate goes up or down after you've consumed alcohol? Uh, I would assume it would go up. Okay. All right, I wanna ask you some things about what your uh, dad told you, okay? Sure. You said, uh, well, first off, did your ta dad tell you, um, did you hear him say, go over there, make sure they don't attack that guy? No. Your dad didn't say that? Not that I had heard. Okay. If he told the jury that, would he be lying? Objection, Judge. Sustained. Can we approach, Judge? Yes. Move on, Judge. Thank you. What you heard your dad say was go over there to try to figure out what's going on, correct? Yeah. 
that's what you understood your task was, correct? Yeah. And because at the time when you were over at the tubes, you didn't know what was going on, correct? Correct. And the best way to figure out what's going on is to ask questions and gather information, correct? Correct. And once you gather in that information, then you can make more decisions, correct? Yes. And I think you told the police that you went over there because you were acting as a good Samaritan. Is that right? Yes. So you recall, um, what did you observe before you walked over there? Um, him hanging around her tubes, grabbing onto the tubes, them screaming for help. Okay. Um, you've watched the video? Yes. You've listened to the video? Yes. Fair to say that there's no time on the recording in which it can be heard that those six teenagers are screaming for help. Agreed? On the video, yeah. Okay. So it's your testimony that sometime prior to that video, they were screaming for help? Yes. Do you aware, were you shown the video that happened two seconds before that in which the teenagers are yelling at Nikolai Mew and calling him a raper? Um. Yes. Were you shown that video? Yeah, I believe I was. Okay. And on that video, did you hear them screaming for help? No. So it's your testimony that prior to them calling this grown man a raper, they were screaming for help on the river? Yes. And after they'd screamed for help, they decided they're going to call him back from when he's walking away and call him a raper. That's your understanding? Yes. Okay. And did you see Nikolai Mew walking away upstream from them and hear them call him a raper? I didn't hear them call him a raper. Did you see Nikolai Mew walking away from them upstream? Uh, towards the bridge or away from the bridge? Or are they going with the current, against the current? Sure. What do you so, mean by upstream? I, give me a second. So over to your right there is a diagram we drew with your dad, which has been marked as exhibit number 102. Do you see that? Yes. And you see on the top of that it says downstream? Yeah. And on the bottom it says upstream? Yep. Uh, I believe downstream would also be the position of the bridge. Uh, 3564 bridge. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And as your dad described it, G2 would be yeah. your group, group two. Make sense? Yeah. And then the six black circles, just for our conversation, would be the teenagers. Does that make sense? Yes. Did you see just before, or at some time, did you see Nikolai Mew walking away from those tubes upstream away from the boys? No. You didn't see that? No, I saw him walking downstream. Okay, and what you're, you heard when he was walking downstream, is that when you say the boys were screaming for help? Yes. So was this sometime prior to the video in your memory? Um, it could have been right before they started recording. Okay, because I, uh, um, I just want to make sure we're established. You agree that they don't scream for help anywhere on that three minute and 23 second recording. Agreed? Agreed as far as I've seen. Yes. And you agree that in the video just before that, which was started 11 seconds before, lasted nine seconds, in which they call him raper, they don't scream for help in that video, correct? Correct. And you would agree that when you watch that video, he was walking away from them upstream, correct? Yeah. So what I understand your testimony to be is sometime prior to these two videos, they had screamed for help. That's what you're saying? Yes. And then, or in between the ending of that one video and that three second interval, they could have screamed for help there too. Okay, so you think that they maybe paused or stopped the recording in order to scream for help and then they started recording it then and just didn't say help at all? Could have. Could have, sure. All right. But the other scenario is that you heard this scream for help prior to the raper video, right? Could have. And if that was the case, you would agree that in the raper video where they're calling him raper, he's walking away from them upstream, correct? It would look like that. Yes. Okay. Um, so you're going over there in order to gather information, right? Yes. And uh, leading the charge from your group is Madison Cohen. Agreed? Agreed. And when Madison Cohen goes over to that group, you see Nikolai Mew walk towards Madison Cohen. Agreed? Sure. Yes? Yeah. And uh, as he does that, the teenagers' tubes 
are free to go downstream. Agreed? Agreed. Yes? But yes. When uh, you see Nikolai Mew walk away from the teenagers, clearing a path for them downstream, what do you see the teenagers doing? Uh, I wasn't paying attention to them, I was paying attention to Nikolai. Okay, did you gesture to the teenagers to float down river, we've got this guy now? Like I said, I wasn't paying attention to them. I was paying attention to Nikolai. Okay. Did you encourage the teenagers to leave at that point? No. Why not? I, I was just there to figure out what was going on. Okay. And so when you got there to try to figure out what's going on, did you hear Madison Cohen immediately say to Nikolai Mew, go, get your fucking ass, go, something along those lines? Yes. Fair to say Madison Cohen wasn't asking questions, agreed? Agreed. Fair to say Madison Cohen was giving orders, right? Yeah. Yes? Yes. And she gave it in a loud, strong voice, correct? Yes. And when Madison Cohen was occupying Mr. Mew, telling him what to do, what were the teenagers doing? I do not know. Did you in any way gesture to the teenagers to continue on downriver? Once again, I was not paying attention to them, I was paying attention to Nick. Okay, but weren't these the group of people that you said you were going there to help? Yes. Weren't you concerned about their well-being? Yes. And so you didn't pay attention at all to the group that you went over there to help? Objection argumented at last and answered twice. Did you, I'll rephrase, Thank did you. you pay attention at all to this group of people that yes. you would, okay. So. I did pay attention to the kids, I did not tell them to leave, I did not tell them to stay. Okay, so what were they doing when you and Madison- Standing by their tubes. Hold well, on, I'm gonna call a timeout here. Um, because everything is being written down by the court reporter. We have to have a question completed before you start your answer. And please let the witness finish his answer before you start the next question. There's a lot of overlapping talk. Dante, I get a little into a rhythm and I might have cut you off, so I apologize. Same here. We'll both, all right. I, I want to talk about other things that you may have observed in that interaction there initially with Mr. Co uh, with Mr. Mew, okay? Okay. Um, did you see, uh, you said you're looking for an explanation. When Mr. Mew walked over to you in Madison, did you see Mr. Mew gesture to that other group? Uh, not like that, but I did see him like turn around and point at them, but he didn't say anything. All he did was sit and point. Okay. There was a time, um, is it, you've watched the video, right? Yes. And at about one minute and seven seconds into the video, you say it doesn't matter to Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. And fair to say that the reason you would say it doesn't matter to Mr. Mew is Mr. Mew is giving you some sort of explanation, correct? No, he was pointing at the kids. Okay. And I said, it doesn't matter, they're just kids. All right, so your purpose was to go over there to get information. Yes. And he gave you information in a nonverbal manner, right? We can call it that. What else would we call it? A gesture. Okay, um, and when he gave you that information with the gesture, did you listen or did you tell him it doesn't matter? I told him it doesn't matter. Okay, so when you initially said you were going over there to gather information, maybe that's not really what you were doing? Maybe not from him, but from the kids. Okay, so you weren't really interested in his side of it? Not really. Okay. Um, and is part of that because they had called him names? No, it's because they asked for help. I went to go see what the people screaming for help were wanting. Okay, and if you perhaps misheard that and they weren't actually calling for help, maybe that's uh, how this got off on the wrong foot? Maybe, but I'm pretty sure they were screaming help. Okay. Um, you said you heard them cheer, is that right? Yeah. And was the cheering in response to you and Madison walking over? Yes. Would you agree that a group of six teenagers cheering doesn't sound like a group that needs help? No, it sounds like a group that got what they wanted. Okay. Some people to come over and help them. Okay. When you heard them cheering, um, did you hear them laughing? No. Did you hear them giggling? No. Did you hear them cackling? No. 
Did you hear them use the expression for the culture, for the culture, repeatedly? I did not. I just heard. Woo. And okay. That was and pretty much all I heard from them. And when you heard the, the term woo, you took that as the cheering, correct? Yes. Certainly doesn't sound woo and asking for help are very different things, right? Yeah. Um, at some point, um, did you observe uh, Mr. Mew turn his back on you and Madison? To face the kids again, yes. Did you see him turn his back on basically you and the kids and look downstream? No. You never saw that? Not that I can recall. Fair to say you saw him walk over to you and Madison and the path downstream was clear for quite some time, correct? Yes. During that, would you agree that it's probably clear for upwards of 60 seconds? Yeah. During that 60 seconds, did you ever take the time to tell the teenagers who were cheering that they could just leave and go down the river? No. Did you ever gesture to them to say, move along? Jackson asked and answered like 10 minutes ago, I think. I think this is the 60 second entire time, Judge. Let's, and once I do, let's, then it's. Let's wrap it up then. Uh, wait, I do not. Wait, wait for his, he's gonna ask a question. My bad. You can go. I do not remember gesturing to them. Okay. Why not? I wasn't focused on them at that time. Even though they were the ones calling for help? Yes. You were focused on the man that they were calling a pedophile? Yes. Um, and I imagine when you heard that, that made, I think as you told the police, that made you mad, right? No, I was confused. Okay. Uh, and when you were confused, did you stop and gather more information? I tried to. Okay. What did you do? I asked, what do you mean by that? Because they said that he was looking after little girls. I went, he's looking after little girls. What do you mean? And did they respond? No, they did not. Did you hear uh, the group say, uh, in response to your question, yeah, he's looking for little girls. We got it on tape. Something along those lines? I, that sounds like their answer, yeah. And when you heard that, did you believe that to be true? I didn't know what to believe. Were you upset at Mr. Mew? No. Um, did you hear them call him a pedophile? No, I did not hear it. At least not that I remember. Fair to say you're not a fan of pedophiles. I mean, who is? Agreed. And if you did understand him to be a pedophile, you would think less of him in that position, correct? Understandably, yes. Yeah. You would think he's got less right to be in the space that he's occupying, correct? Especially with children, yes. And you didn't, there were no little girls around, were there? No. And the children that you referred to, it's like this group of 17-year-olds, correct? Yes. Group of 17-year-old football players who are pretty fit and tall. Agreed? I wasn't looking at their statures or builds. I, they looked like children to me, so okay. I had assumed they were children. Okay. And by children, you mean is 17-year-old somebody that's a children? I would say between at least under 18, but they looked 13 to 17 to me. Okay, that's what your position was? Yes. Now, you made some statements to the police, correct? Yes. You made some statements about the observations that you made on that day on the river, right? Yes. And the statements that you made to the police were that same day in the hospital, agreed? Agreed. And they were statements that you made about your friends that you were there on the river with, correct? Yes. You were on the river with Riley Madison, correct? Yes. She's a friend of yours from high school? Middle school. So you've known Riley Madison for years and years, correct? Yes. And you were on the river with Madison Cohen, correct? Yes. Same thing, a friend that you'd known since middle school, correct? Um, yeah. Right? Yeah. So somebody that, you know, and Madison's clearly got blonde hair, right? Yeah. And Riley's clearly got a, a brunette or a different color hair than blonde, right? Very different? Yeah. Their body shapes are different. Yeah. Their personalities are different. Yeah. You can distinguish between the two of them, right? Sometimes. Okay. Um, and what you told the police, um, 
on Madison, I'm sorry, on July 30th. They were asking you about what happened, is that right? Yes. Um, and you told them, I thought he had hit my friend Riley and I automatically reacted. That's what you told them? Yes. You used the name Riley, correct? Yes. Um, then you also said to them, me and Riley were standing right next to each other and he like got up close to Riley and Riley pushed him away and he did a swift motion towards her, correct? Yes. And the her you're referring to that sentence is the only name that you used, which was Riley, correct? Yes. When asked, again about it, you told the police, I don't know if Riley pushed him or something, I didn't see that, all I saw was him make a motion towards her and I saw her fall down, so I reacted and hit him. You said those words? Yes. And the name that you used in that situation was Riley? Yes. And the description that you gave in that situation is, you saw him, Mr. Mew, make a motion, correct? Yes. And that, uh, as a result of that motion, you said you saw Riley fall down, correct? Yes. And then in response to that, the officer asked you, can you describe Riley to me? Do you remember that? Yes. And you said, she is a brunette, skinny, has tattoos down her arm, correct? Yes. And that, fair to say, accurately describes Riley Madison, correct? Yes. Madison Cohen is not a brunette, correct? Correct. You wouldn't use, again, I apologize to, you wouldn't necessarily use the same description of Madison's body as you use when describing Riley, correct? Correct. And uh, you also said the person had tattoos down her arm, correct? Yes. That accurately describes Riley, not Madison, correct? Yes. That's what you told the police on that day, correct? Yes. And then lastly, you told them later in that same interview, I think it was Riley who like went like that, but I'm not 100% sure, and then all I saw was the swift motion. Riley fell to the ground, I hit him, he fell. That's what you said, correct? Yes. So again, the fourth time, you described it as something happening to Riley, correct? Correct. And in each of those four times, you never used the word punch, agreed? Agreed. Each of those times, you used the words of, uh, swift, motion, correct? Yes. That's what you described that you saw on that day about this, correct? Yes. Now today, 21 months later, you're saying something different, agreed? Agreed. Now today you're saying, it's not that you saw Riley, uh, not that you saw a swift motion go to Riley, but that you saw Madison get punched. That's your testimony today, correct? Yes. In those 21 months, from the first story to the new story, you've talked to Madison Cohen? Not really, but yes. You've talked to Riley Madison? A little, yes. You've talked to others in the group? My family, yes. You've talked to the district attorney's office? Yes. And since you've talked to all those people, you now have a new story, correct? I have a better recollection of what had happened, if that's what you're asking, yes. Okay, so the fact that you were at a point one nine on that day, you now have a better recollection today than you did on that day, is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, they also questioned me when I was on pain pills from the hospital. Okay, I thought your testimony was that they came there and saw you within two minutes of your arriving. Yes. Okay, and so in those two minutes you'd consume those pain pills and your position. Whatever they gave me on that helicopter. Okay. Um, you had said, uh, going back to your statement to the police, I just want to dial in on one of the things. 
the last time you spoke, you said, I think it was Riley who went like that, but I'm not 100% sure. I want to ask you about that sentence, okay? Okay. There's a video of you give, making that verbal statement. Do you understand that? Yes. And in that video, it shows you move your hand kind of like this. Is that right? Yes. And you had both of your hands up in a um, manner in which someone would push out towards another person, correct? Or push away from. Sure. They, they were extending their hands, which were close to their body, to push outward towards what's ever in front of them, correct? Yes. That's what you demonstrated when you said, I think Riley went like that. Yes. Can you just show us that demonstration now? I Okay. And you were able to show us that demonstration because that's what you remember as you sit here today. Riley did that, correct? Yes. And in response to Riley doing that, that's when you saw the swift motion? No. I remember it differently now, but... After talking to other per people, you remember it differently. But the thing you... After thinking about it for the last 21 months and seeing it every night, yeah. But what you absolutely know, because you said it then and you say it now, is you remember just before Nikolai Mew getting punched by you, you saw Riley Madison push her hands out towards him, correct? Yes. That's for sure, correct? Yes. Had you seen um, Riley Madison get up in Mr. Mew's face? No. Had you seen Madison Cohen get up in Mr. Mew's face? N not up in the face, but she was talking to him face to face, yes. Yeah. She would be, I've heard uh, others say it's in his personal space. Would you agree with that? In his bubble, yeah. She's right there in his bubble, correct? Um, like, not in his face, face, but like talking to him like a normal distance would be. Okay. Um, but you use the term in his face. You'd agree with that? Sure. Okay. I want to ask you about what you did to Nikolai Mew, okay? Okay. Um, you um, said you saw a swift motion and you reacted and punched him, correct? Yes. You laid him out, correct? I guess. Well, those are the words that you used when the police asked you to describe what you did to him. You said, I laid him out, correct? Yes. Fair to say that when you used the term, I laid it out, laid him out, you said it with a sense of pride. I guess. I mean, I mean you were proud of laying this man out in response to what you observed regarding the swift motion, correct? No, I was proud of defending a woman. Okay, and so I wanna get into that, right? And so what you understand is you're defending a woman, correct? Yes. Which woman? Madison. Okay, and the woman that you say you're defending, she fell to the ground. I believed at the time she did, yeah. Okay, and you believed that because that was your memory? Yes. And you say that now, I believed it at the time because you know that the video shows she didn't fall down, correct? Correct. So what we know is your memory is wrong, at least in regards to that, correct? Yes. So there's times that your memory is wrong about what happened that day, correct? I guess, yes. There could be many explanations for why it's wrong, correct? Yes. Just the human memory is not perfect, agreed? Agreed. It might be wrong because you were intoxicated. A little. 0.119, right? Yeah. You're over the legal limit, correct? Yeah. You would agree that that might have impacted your ability to accurately perceive things? Uh, I guess, yes. Might have, uh, that might have impacted your ability to accurately recall things? I guess, yes. Another thing that might have affected your memory is perhaps the, the stress and the trauma of everything that happened afterwards, correct? Yes. Um, another thing is is that you could just be intentionally telling an untruth. That's possible too, correct? No. That's not possible? No. Okay. Let's take a recess. We'll come back in 15 minutes.